Are you looking for something to read this Halloween? Are you looking for something spooky but not super spooky? Do you like your horror with a little bit of fantasy? Or maybe fantasy with a little bit of horror? If so, we have six, six recommendations for you today about things to read this Halloween. Uh, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm Daenerys Stormborn. You're Stormborn? Is that Stormblast? Right? No, that's Kaladin. That's Kaladin. Yeah. Stormborn. Stormborn. I, I, I was expecting Targaryen, but... Why did Stormborn you know, come out? I don't know. She is Stormborn, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we don't know what our Halloween costumes are. I'm the mother of dragons. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> I would just go with Khaleesi, personally. But uh, but here we are. Danny. Just call me Danny. Just call you Danny. All right. Well, my Padawans, we <laughs> are talking about books, as we always do. And the first book that I want to bring up that's kind of horror is really not fantasy, but it's sci-fi. And it is Leviathan Wakes. Now, some of you may know this as the first in the Expanse series. Really, really, really good introduction into a, a long series. Uh, there's actually, I believe, a TV show of this that's on right now. I haven't actually read it, be, or, excuse me, watched it, because I'm trying to get through the rest of the series. Smart. Um, but this definitely has a bit of horror themes, right? Um, very much is like the creepy aliens um, that, that are killing everything and, and kind of scary um, in, in a way that, as you read it, is very suspenseful. Um, very interesting, and you could just hear kind of the spooky mu music playing in the background as some of these scenes uh, take take part, happen, I don't know, as some of these scenes play out. Yes, that'd be the word, some of these scenes play out. Um, really, really good. So uh, if, you're, if you're interested in it, it is about 500 pages, about 550 pages, um, but it reads really, really quickly, kind of a larger font, kind of a bigger breakout. I would venture to say that this fits almost in YA for me. Uh, there. Wow. Themes wise, no, but just in the ease of read would right. definitely fit there. It felt like I was reading a TV show. Um, so it very much felt like it was paced in a way TV shows are, right? It had cliffhangers at the right moments. Um, definitely felt like one of those things that could easily be transmitted and, and changed into a TV show, and obviously it has. Um, but it, it just had that excitement kind of from the get-go, which was interesting. It had a little bit of politics to it, but definitely not heavy in politics. It was much more action-focused, and it definitely felt very episodic, right? Like this is an episode, or probably a single season, and the next season picks up on some of the themes there. So really, really good. If you're looking for something a little suspenseful and sci-fi, I would recommend Leviathan Wakes. Awesome. I broke the rules because this isn't actually fantasy or sci-fi. But it's, is it scary? Yeah. It's like a murder mystery. Okay. Ish. The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. So this follows three different timelines. One about a year before they disappear. One as they're about to disappear or as they have disappeared. Okay. And then one about a year later. And I like the three different things. So to so, Lula, so are you following the people that disappear or other people around? Um, the one afterwards, it's her... Hmm. It's like the person that moves into the school. Okay. Um, afterwards. So okay. her husband like is the president of the school. So you're following her. So kind of this random news story. Okay. Um, the one before is the people who are gonna uh, going to disappear. Okay. The one during is the Tallulah, the one who disappears, her mom. And like kinda like what is happening? Why did she okay. not come home? Sure. Um, because Tallulah and Zach are parents. So they're like nineteen years old, teen parents. She's like, 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 they love their kid. Why are they not home? And she just yep. is babysitting their kids. So, okay. really good. Um, it, so, so the the premise here is somebody's disappeared, and you're dealing with it after the fact and trying to figure out who it is. Yeah, yeah. So is this just not Pretty Little Liars? A little different than Pretty Little Liars. There's a lot of drama though. There's a lot of I mean, college age children, kids who are like. Goofing off, doing crazy things. Um, the suspense is there. It's not like scary. It's just suspenseful towards the end. You're wondering what's going to happen. Uh -huh. uh, I loved how it ended. So it's one of those books where you're like, if this doesn't wrap up, it's going to suck. And mm. it, it did. It ended so, well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, right. yeah. Great. It's a good one. So um, who that one? That was, uh, it was the, the Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. Yes. All right. Okay. All righty. Excellent. So the next one I have here. Just, just let me set the stage here. Okay. This is lesbian gothic necromancers exploring a haunted space palace. Sounds Seriously, like though, Halloween. that is literally the description you're going to get on the back of this book. This is Gideon the Night, fantastic book. 
Um, very, very interesting. Um, you know, as, as I've, I've heard people say, um, if, if, you, if this is your favorite book, it's because you want to be Gideon. That's, that's really what you cool. want to be, and that's who you want to be. Um, really interesting uh, world and world building. And it continues on if you're interested in Harold the Ninth. Um, and then there'll be Known of the Ninth, which is the third in this series that is coming out here very soon. If not already out. In fact, it might be out. I just want another paperback, and i got to wait until the paperbacks come out. Um, but really, really interesting. Um, super interesting, complex world um, that is very, very... Uh, uh, you, you know, the exploring the haunted space palace kind of gives you the idea, but but very very horror um, inspired. Um, okay. You have uh, skeletons and raising the dead and all sorts of creepy, awkward, crawling things uh, discussing this going on, and it's just it's just interesting. Um, coupled with um, a little bit of a Hunger Games motif in there, a whole bunch of people from all of these different um, settlements all coming together to fight it out to try and see who becomes the winner, um, so to speak. I don't want to spoil too much, um, but that, that's kind of the setup there. They all need to go through this haunted space palace and, and try and find the, the, I guess, surprises inside of it. So really, really good. I did not expect it to like as much as I did, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. One of the few books that makes me laugh out loud, um, but also still has the suspense of, oh, that's creepy. Um, so, you, you know, the, you have the combination there um, that makes it a great Halloween read. That's fun. And they're, they're all friends. You're just getting to know about each different person. Friends is okay. a loaded term That's in that book. That's a good enough explanation. Um, right, so so it's definitely a read and find out if you want to know the uh, uh, Gideon and Haro and, and their relationship and everyone else that's in this uh, space palace. Um, it, it is an interesting thing. So you, you're going to want to read and find out to find out if they're friends um, because it's uh, that's part of the intrigue. Nice. All right, so what do you got? Um, I'm following the rules now. Okay. This is a series, sorry, okay, so the first one's called An Ember in the Ashes. There are four of them, okay. I have all four of them Is here. there a name for this series? You know, couldn't tell you. Okay. We'll call it An Ember in the Ashes. All right. I should, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I brought all four of them because the covers get, like, progressively creepier. All right, let me see this. Okay. Okay, so she looks not that creepy, right? So she's just... Here with another guy down here. This is, I would say, the quintessential YA fantasy heroine and cover. And here's the thing: the first one's fantastic. So Leia, Leia, Leia. I don't know how to say her name. I always said Leia just to make it easier. I think it's Leia Organa. She's a slave. I know a lot about her. Mm, you yeah, know. And then Elias is a soldier. Okay. But neither of them are free. So it's kind of like you get both of their perspectives in this city that is falling apart. Anyway. Okay. okay. Then here's this cover. Are you going to critique that one too? Sure, I'll critique it. So, I mean, we're, we're still going with the general heroines. There's now two of them and one, so I'm assuming some sort of love triangle. Um, definitely feels still YA-ish, but the cover itself actually feels kind of nice and grippy compared which to this one. Which not YA. Um, which, no, definitely feels YA. This mm -hmm. person has a knife. Um, and her face? Yeah. I mean, she has a mask on. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not really getting the, the scary vibes in this yet. Next. All right, the next one... We have mm. the same people over again, and oh. she seems to have a mask and a hammer. I'll be honest, I'm still, still really not afraid of her. I'm not actually sure which one's which here. Oh, okay. And then the last one, we have Sky Beyond the Storm, which I assume is the last of this books because it's in hardcover, uh, which is normally how this works, right? You're you buy right. a bunch of paperbacks, and then you get the hardcover because it was just, just came it's out. It's so painful when that finishes. happens. It really, Because you really need it. it. Right? And the question about, on the back, who will survive the storm? Um, so yeah, so why is this in your Halloween reads? So, the books get progressively weirder, but also a little bit creepier. So, okay. they're like fighting, they're teenagers, you know, um, but once they kind of evolve, it's fine. Was, was there a murder and now no. they are figuring out it afterwards? Or? There's a lot of like Grim Reaper-esque, like being in charge of the dead and being in charge of who dies and when they die and who okay. comes back and who doesn't come back, that type of a thing. So there's definitely a theme behind it that's kind of creepy and a little disturbing. All right. And I will be honest, the, the more it went that direction, the weirder it got. I'm not sure I loved it, but it was definitely weird. It was uh -huh. creepy. So, so you would say the peak was the, the first, first one. one? The first one was fantastic. The first one was fantastic. So, the first one so this stars. is a... a a trick, not a treat series. Yeah, that would be a trick. That's starts a bummer. Out, starts out as a treat, ends up a trick. See, this this cover tells me everything that you would want in life. 
<laughs> except, love triangle. Uh, it's a love triangle. Except there's two women. I think it would have to be a girl and two guys You're there right. to get Love really triangles are really different when it's two girls and a guy compared <laughs> to two guys. I've, I've noticed that that happens. I, I don't know why it is, right? And then, uh, yeah, and then like swords and, and fighting and and grippy War. covers. Everything that you would want in, in a fantastic book series. Yeah. That's funny. Oh. Uh, you're the lame who didn't bring a book. Oh, I'm sorry. So the last one I don't actually own, uh, but it's Hyperion or Hyperion. I don't know how to say that, but it is a fantastic sci-fi fantasy book. So it's an interesting thing because it, it is sci-fi. They are in space, um, but I would definitely say it's closer to epic fantasy than almost anything else. And man, is it creepy. Um, there are a, a whole number. Uh, so to give you an idea, basically the context, you have a spaceship full of people going to um, a, a a city um, on a planet, right, which is Hyperion. Um, and they're going there as kind of a last desperate attempt to stave off uh, the destruction of humanity. Um, and they're all different people that are being sent here, um, and you don't know why. And so you get each of their stories as they are telling it to each other mm -hmm. as they travel on the spaceship to this, this place. Um, and each one gets progressively creepier. Um, and there are, there are moments that still stick in my head is, that is really creepy, and I'm never going to forget some of those stories. Um, really, really, really interesting. Um, and, you know, I've never read the rest of the series. Um, uh, you know, it's a fairly good standalone uh, book by itself, um, but I do want to get into the rest. But it was one of those where afterwards, you know, you have dreams about it, and, and there, there's, there's creepiness there. Um, so really, really good book if you're looking for something in that sci-fi fantasy realm um, that will creep you out. I would highly recommend Hyperion. I just have one question. Yes. Why do we not own it? Um, it's just one of those books that I want to own, but I have not yet okay. purchased. I have too but many other will, books to read. You do want to own it. Yes, I would, okay. I would love to, to own it. In fact, I've had it a few times in my hand to buy, but the new shiny thing always gets me. I don't reread books very often. Yeah. And so by not rereading books very often, like I don't really have an intention of going back and rereading that book, even though it's fantastic, because there's a lot of other fantastic books to be read. Um, and so that's my goal is to go through those as opposed to necessarily getting it. That said, it is a book that I've recommended to a lot of people, so I probably should own it. I do actually own it on Audible. Yeah. Um, so if you want to listen to the creepiness, it is there. All right. All right. What do you got? What's our final one here? It's kind of a stretch. Okay, but bear with me. The Invisible Life of Abby LaRue. Okay. She makes a literal deal with the devil. To be invisible? No. Oh. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't know what she's doing. Um, Basically, this is Addie LaRue, Adeline. She, no one knows her. No one remembers her. No one remembers her name. No one remembers anything about her. So she can like walk into a store, steal a bagel, walk out of the store. Maybe they'll like start chasing her. Like, what are you doing? But then they forget what they're doing. They forget they're chasing her because once she's out of sight, She's out of mind. Oh. Like, no one remembers anything about her. Interesting. Kind of? Yeah. Interesting yeah. vibes. And there's, like, a scene towards the end in, like, New Orleans where, like, her and the devil are, like, hashing it out. I don't know. Just, there's a couple. I wouldn't really say spooky, but darker hmm. themes in this book. All right. Great. So, so, so is it a read? You recommend it? Oh, yeah. I recommend this book. I think it's slightly overhyped. Just slightly overhyped. I think I gave it four stars. Yeah. I was expecting to give it five stars. So. Right. Well, I have two more uh, suggestions here. Okay. Two more that, that I don't have the books for at the moment, um, but both of them come from one of my favorite authors, Terry Pratchett. Ooh. So first is actually a Terry Pratchett Neil Gaiman uh, collab, and that is Good Omens. Uh, some of you may have watched the Good Omens series on Amazon Prime. The Good Omen book is definitely better. Books are always better. Yes. Um, but definitely an interesting uh, setup there where you have um, the, uh, I don't even know how to, to adequately describe it, but you have uh, a, a devil and an angel that have decided that they're not really ready for the world to be over. And so they actively try and make sure the Antichrist doesn't uh, come about, so to speak, and, and okay. is raised happily um, because they don't want, they're comfortable with their... Uh, their situation. They didn't ever want the world to actually end um, there. And it, it's a just a, a fun, fun series that definitely has a, a, a Halloween feel to it. I did not me. read that book, but I did watch the show, and that one was a little whack. I've only read one Neil Gaiman book, which would actually be fantastic for this too, the Graveyard book. Really good. 
really just bizarre. To be fair, any noble gaming book that I've ever read would fit well in the Halloween uh, Which, yeah, conversation. I think I've like, once you've read one, you've read them all. Is that an okay? Uh, I don't know. Like, do so I need to keep going with they're, him? They're very different. Like, uh, okay. there's there's a lot of, of differences there. Okay. Because um, I'm happy to have read one. I just don't know that that's my yeah. I, my there, MO. There's uh, I've I've read a few of them and they're they're very different. Um, okay. but going back to Terry Pratchett, the second one that I love is called Mort. So Mort follows Death, um, and Death's apprentice Makes sense. as Death decides to go on a va vacation and sends Mort out to do Death's work. Um, very, very interesting. A really interesting um, view on death and what it means to die and and uh, what it means to live. And Terry Pratchett does a phenomenal job, as always, of having commentary on life through very absurd situations. Um, but that absurdness means it fits great into Halloween. And so those are my last two recommendations. Can I throw um, one more in? Yes. Watch soon for our review of Elantris because oh. my elevator pitch for Elantris is... A zombie prince falls in love with a princess. I like it. I don't know. Could you see that maybe being a stretch? Being a Halloween thing? Yeah. I, I, they definitely, I definitely picture people dressed up as zombie style people uh, as the Elantrians. So yeah, I can, I, I can get behind it. Cool. We Great. just finished that, so we'll do a review soon. Yep. Check it out. All right. Well, thank you for this is our Halloween. Yeah. I don't happy know, Halloween. Video. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Please like and subscribe. And check out our other videos. And we've got a bunch of shorts now as yes. well, um, which means we're less annoying because there's less of us. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys, for watching. Bye. Happy Halloween. See ya.